Hi everyone. Today we are going to take a look at the NEC PC FX, which is one of the more obscure consoles out there. It was only released in Japan in late 1994, uh, during the same time as the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Um, and if you know your video game history, you may also know that uh, the video game market during that time was flooded by different video game systems. Uh, for instance, uh, Sony had just released their Sony PlayStation in late 1994. Uh, he also had the Sega Saturn. Um, Panasonic had already released their 3DO. Uh, you had um, SNK uh, had also released their CD-based Neo Geo. Uh, Commodore Amiga CD32 uh, was also on the market. Uh, Fujitsu with their uh, FM Town Smarty uh, was released uh, the year prior. And uh, uh, you also had, uh, for instance, Atari coming out th with their uh, Jaguar. And of course, uh, Nintendo was uh, about to release their uh, delayed console. Um, Nintendo 64. So the the, the timing of uh, this console for, for NEC was uh, of course one of the worst. Uh, but um, it was released and it became a major flop. Uh, and you also ha need to consider that uh, NEC had uh, experienced quite a success with their PC engine uh, in Japan. Uh, prior to this console and um, they had all also released a CD based uh, version of uh, of uh, the PC engine so yeah so this console the PC FX was uh, next effort to, to um, challenge the others uh, on uh, in the video game uh, market but uh, as I mentioned it became a major flop uh, there are various reasons reasons for this. Um, one of the reasons is that uh, there are very few games released for the console. The majority of the games were text-based um, uh, anime adventures, uh, not even uh, JRPG styles, but text-based uh, te adventures, uh, especially catered for the Japanese market. Several of the games um, had uh, adult content uh, and um, you could consider them as a hentai. Um, so um, if you consider that the PC Engine was famous for its uh, shoot 'em ups you barely had any shoot 'em ups released for the PC FX, which is a shame. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at it and uh, we'll see how it uh, runs. And we're going to take a look at the different parts of it. So we begin by looking at the back. Nick tried to go for a different kind of design for this console. Uh, it looks more like a PC tower than a classic console, which I think kind of works because Nick has certainly released uglier consoles than this one. Um, but uh, yeah, um, for the outputs, uh, we have um, AV and um, S video. Unfortunately, we don't have any native RGB, so we are stuck with uh, AV or S video. Um, luckily, I have an S video cable, and this specific monitor it's uh, a JVC. Uh, this one, I actually accepts uh, S-Video output, so uh, I'll try to run it on this one. You will also notice that this uh, console have these kind of uh, slots here, which can open up. So there's a slot here for uh, uh, expansion. I think this slot was used for um, connecting um, uh, the console to uh, a PC. 
There was a SCSI CD-ROM driver uh, released for uh, the PCFX, which allowed you to um, access uh, higher speeds for the CD player. There's also an expansion port on the bottom of the console, which is, which is kind of odd. Uh, I mean, you can see it here. I've already opened the, the slot here. So there's a connectivity for an expansion here. I believe this is the expansion which was used to connect this console to a NEC PC uh, computer. In Japan, NEC had already released a couple of computers which were fairly popular uh, with many famous games. Uh, for instance, Snatcher was released on, uh, on uh, the NEC PC computer. Uh, on the front, this is not only the... These two are not the only expansion slot. There's actually an expansion slot on the front. It says push open, yeah. So there's an expansion here in the front uh, and this expansion slot is, uh, was used for the memory card. So there were, there were no um, RAM modules internally uh, on this console, so you had to buy the small uh, memory uh, cards which you put into this slot. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, the controller port is uh, different than the one on the PC Engine. So if you have any PC Engine uh, controllers, they won't work with this one. So this is the gamepad which was included with the console. Um, it looks very much like uh, some of those uh, later PC Engine Duo gamepads which uh, NEC had already released. There was also one standalone controller, I think it was called uh, Arcade Pad 6, which looks identical to this one, except that that one got a few more um, turbo functions um, compared to this one. Uh, I think it uh, feels kind of okay. I mean, the D-pad is a bit mushy, yeah. But uh, Neck were never never famous for making great D pads from the beginning. So yeah, it's uh, it's a decent controller, I would say. The games came in these thick uh, shock boxes. Um, they remind me a bit of the boxes which SNK used for the Neo Geo AS. But I believe these ones are a bit uh, deeper. So you open them up like this, and you have the the foam. You have <laughs> quite a large piece of foam. You have the instruction manual, and uh, you have you have the space for two discs here. Yeah, I, I've actually never seen these kinds of um, CD boxes anywhere else on any other system or anything else released for that matter. So it's quite a unique uh, box they used for this one. This game, by the way, uh, Battle Heat was a launch game. So we will try to see how it looks like. We'll fire up the system. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't hooked up any uh, audio for the console, but uh, we'll take a look at the interface, the menu interface. So this is the um, launch menu when you boot up the console. So this is the CD player. As mentioned, I haven't, I, I don't have any. Uh, speakers hooked up to the console at the moment so but we can see how it looks like 
It also have uh, support for photo CDs, which was a um, format which uh, Kodak, I believe, uh, was supporting and uh, promoted heavily during uh, that time. I don't have any Kodak photo CDs. This is the memory manager. Uh, as I said, I don't have any uh, memory module, so um, I can't save, save any games. So let's boot up the game. And um, we are met by um, animated intro. And this is something which the system uh, tried to push a lot. Um, this is, by the way, uh, I believe one of the very few systems, if not the only one, which uh, had support for um, the JPEG movie format. So what you see here are actually JPEG animations. Uh, it was an uh, obscure format which uh, Neck somehow uh, believed a lot in so they tried to push the format uh, on the PCFX so that's why we have so many of those uh, text animated games with lots of um, videos but uh, crappy uh, gameplay we have tournament, free battle. Let's take a look at the tournament mode. So yeah, this is basically um animated fighting game. So you have an option to push the buttons. So you push the buttons and the game plays out a short movie. You just push a random button and animation takes place. And uh, I don't even know how you defend yourself from. So let's. I have no idea what I'm doing. It just, I push a button and it just randomly fires off uh, an animation. I don't even know which button is my block button. So as you can see, I'm getting my ass handed to me and I lost. I must say that the graphics on this monitor looks really sharp very nice scan lines and rem remember this is only s video so yeah it looks really good that's it for this time guys and uh, please subscribe leave comments and uh, suggestions in the comment feed and i'll see you next time take care bye